Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today it's going to be a little bit of a rambly, ranty kind of video. Uh, if you know me at all or you followed the channel for a little while, you'll know that I have a interesting relationship with Ubuntu and Canonical. I don't care for Ubuntu all that much, mostly because they chose GNOME as their desktop environment when they changed they change desktop environments, but that's beside the point. That's just a personal preference, really. My biggest issue has always been that they've kind of forced the whole idea of snaps down everybody's throats, and uh, I, I don't care for snaps. And some of the th what I'm going to be talking about today is uh, kind of more personal. You know, th these are personal feelings and, uh, you know, ideas that I'm going to be expressing. So we'll, we'll just start off with that, that these are my opinions. They, uh, some of them are going to be based on things that people from Canonical have said, uh, and kind of my reaction to those things. So let's, uh, let's talk about snap, shall we? Or snap. So first of all, if you're a new Linux user, you're probably wondering what the hell is a snap? So, uh, the idea behind the, uh, the snap store snap craft snap d all these things that they're all part of the same idea uh it is a universal package management system that re would replace the previous package management system of dev packages and ppas that ubuntu has used since the beginning of time the idea is a good one uh if you know me you know i love the aur and the, i love the aur because it's all your software things in one place you don't have to deal with PPAs. I hate PPAs. Everybody hates PPAs. They're horrible. And nobody should want to use them. There should be a replacement for them. And so the idea, is behind, the, the idea behind the Snap Store, or the Snap Craft, or whatever, is a good one. So we'll just get that out of the way. Where we, I, where we have a problem comes in is the in the way that Ubuntu or Canonical itself has licensed the Snap Store. So, in in a world in a in a situation where most of the things that l surround Linux, specifically and especially in terms of package management, uh, in, in in that world where most of those things are open source, Snap is not open source. It's closed source. It's proprietary software. So. That is a problem. All right. So, why is it a problem? Why does it Why does it matter? Why wh Why should you care that uh, snaps are closed source? I mean, it's still a good idea, right? I mean, why can't I use it? So, uh, I mean, you can use it. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with using something that's closed source uh, if it's closed source for either a reason, which usually that mo reason is money. Uh, usually, when something is closed source. It, the reason why they keep it closed source is, you know, mas dinero, right? Um, in this case, the the arguments from Canonical of re why uh, snaps are closed source is several, they have several arguments. Some of them make sense, some of them don't make sense. So, the argument that makes the most sense is that PPAs aren't discoverable and that the Snap Store is, and that if they were to open source it, uh, there would be multiple instances of the Snap Store and therefore it would have the same problem of PPAs of having, uh, if you want one program you'd have to go to this Snap Store, if you wanted another program you'd have to go to this Snap Store, and you know that's basically the problem that they have now, you know, p with PPAs and dev files and things like that. That is an excellent argument. <laughs> it's just, it's it, it's by far the best argument that they have. Um, there is a video that I'm going to link to in the description below of Alan Pope, who is a, um, he works for Canonical. I'm not exactly sure what his title is. I think he's like a, the community spokesperson or something. I'm not sure. Um, he, where he explains this stuff, and that's by far his best argument of why Snap should re remain closed source. Because if you, they open sourced it, there'd be an opportunity for somebody to come in and fork it and make their own Snap Store, and therefore you'd have fragmentation. Which is, uh, you know, I love Linux, but fragmentation is a big problem. 
that's the best. So that's the best argument. The other one, which seems to be his main argument, and I'm assuming that this is Canonical's argument as well, not just Popey's argument, is that, and, and I'm going to, this is mostly a quote, some of it's paraphrasing. Um, it would be a lot of work to open so source snaps. The benefits of open sourcing snaps are outweighed by the work that would need to go into maintaining the open source project. So this is a terrible argument. You're an open source company. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's not true. Maybe Canonical isn't an open source company, and we just like to think that they are. Um, but for the most part, everything that Canonical does is, you know, an open source project. It's, you know, Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu server. Uh, all the flavors of Ubuntu, all of these things are open source. Now, they have done closed source software in the past. Launchpad is one of those, but they eventually open sourced Launchpad. And that's the, one of the examples, uh, you know, that he used. He, he said um, one of the only reasons why you'd open source something is to have someone else run another, an instance of it. So that's the reason why, uh, you know, people, he said that um, people for a long time wanted them to open source Launchpad. And then when they did, nobody forked it. And he, he said this as if that's the only reason why someone would want to open source something. And that's a weird, I mean, he, he pulled that back a little bit, which is good because that's a dumb argument. And, and, and it, it, it's just not, uh, it's not a good argument. Um, so my problem with the statement of too, this, of snaps being too much work to open source would be then why are you open sourcing everything else? Uh, why did, why wasn't it open source to begin with? If, if, if the transition from closed source to open source is such a monumental task, why it wasn't open source to begin with? Because by opening sourcing it, you would go through and open it to the ability of the community to participate in its development and its you know security and all that stuff. And it would actually be uh, less work to, to develop because you'd have more people able to contribute to it. Now, uh, yes, you would have the problem of people maybe possibly forking it and, you know, fragmentation happening. That's a a, a, a big, you know, problem, uh, but the argument that it's just, it was just too much work doesn't really hold a lot of water for me. So th that's the argument of why it's closed source. I, gu I guess I didn't really answer the question of why does it matter. Uh, it matters because closed source software can't be audited. Uh, it can't be monitored in any way. It can't be... Uh, we have no idea what's going on with the Snap Store or anything. Now, Snaps themselves, the individual like packages of Snaps, those things are open source. Okay, so you can get into the programs themselves and audit them. That's great. But the thing that distributes Snaps is closed source, um, and that's uh, you know that's the problem, right? You can't. We can't get in there and see what the hell's going on. You know how do we? You know we can't monitor that stuff for security flaws we can't help develop it uh, that's the that's the thing about open source is that what if you have a program or something that you're you know using you can go through and actually see the code and if you understand code you can go through and make sure that it's not doing anything nefarious um, I'm not, and I'm not saying you know canonical is evil I don't think they are but I do think that canonical is a company and they have monetary goals and it's possible that they might someday be driven by those monetary goals to uh, exert control over the SNAP system in some way that goes against user interests. I, I don't really have an example, but it could possibly happen, right? Um, because, because, like I said, because they are a company and they eventually someday will have stock you know, you know, shareholders or whatever, and it might come up where they have to con exert control over the snap store, you know, like, um, I suppose they, they could, uh, start promoting their own, they could pull an Apple, you know, they could start promoting their own software over other open source projects in the snap store. Uh, they could start charging 30%, uh, you know, 
they could start, start charging fees to be. I mean, I don't think that that's going to happen, but they could because it's closed source. They control it all in their iron fist, and and that's where it it becomes a problem. So that's the reason why it matters. Um, and it's also just really weird. It doesn't fit with the idea behind canonical, at least as I have it. I I always consider canonical to be an open source company. I, you know, and maybe like I said, maybe it's not. Uh, and there are companies out there that are, you know, do open source that also have closed source stuff. But when you think canonical, you always think of, you know, open source software and the fact that, you know, uh, it's not, you know, the fact that it's not open source, just, it just doesn't seem to fit with, you know, what canonical is, at least in, like in, in my, in my view of it. So. There's another good example of why can uh, um, Snap should be open source, and it's a really weird example. But when you download SnapD, it creates a folder in your home directory called Snap. It's not a hidden f folder. It can't be moved. It can't be renamed. It can't be deleted. Uh, it's just in your home folder, just like your photos and your videos in your desktop and your documents folders. And this is the most annoying thing in the world to me. <laughs> and if it were open source, somebody in the community could go through and make it so that that's just a hidden file, hidden file. Just add a period in front of it and it'd be perfectly fine. Yes, it would require some work because every snap probably looks for that specific file. Uh, I'm, I'm sure, <laughs> you know, so that's probably why it hasn't been changed yet. But. That's just the most annoying thing in the world. I'm one of those annoying anal pe anal retentive people who just really want to keep my home directory as simple as possible. And the fact that Snap will install a, a you know, create a directory there that I can't move just makes me so angry. <laughs> I mean, irrationally just tear my hair out furious. To the point where I just won't use snaps. I mean, honestly, I can get, you know, I don't like that snaps are closed source, or the, the, the snap source closed source. I don't like that, but I use other closed source software. I use, you know, Telegram and, uh, you know, I, I use Discord and I use Google Chrome on occasion, you know, so I use other software that is closed source so I mean it'd be hypocritical of me to <laughs> complain too much about it although I would complain uh, but I wouldn't it's the it, it's the stupid thing about that f f file that really just it, it tips it over the edge where I just can't use it so that's in the end this entire rant just had me talking about all that stuff just and end up coming down to there's a file in my home directory that I don't like, and if the damn snap source store was open source, maybe somebody could fix it. There's a bug on a bug report for, for SnapD that is like three years old, maybe even longer, about that file, and it's just considered wish list. <laughs> and so it's gonna be one of those things that's just never gonna change because it's just there. Anyways, so. Uh, I told you it was going to be a ranty, uh, you know, rambly video, and it was. <laughs> so, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Uh, I would love to hear your comments about the Snap Store in the comments below. If you Do you use Snaps? Do you, does that Snap file in your home directory cause you as much angst as it does me? I would love to know. Uh let's get into conversation because I would love to find somebody who actually doesn't mind it because it, it just tans my hide. If you want to support the podcast in any number, you can do so in an, any, any number of ways. Follow us on Facebook, on Twitter. You can uh, support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Linux test. You can also subscribe, which takes literally no effort. We do videos six, sometimes seven days a week. We also do a podcast every week. Uh, so there's just tons of stuff that's going on and you can only find out about those things if you subscribe. So subscribe. We appreciate it. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.